when uh, my youngest son, Thomas, was was born back in uh, November, uh, we came home from the hospital and the whole, this is when you first started doing the lights and stuff like that, oh, okay. the Christmas lights. Christmas and we lights. came home, me and my wife pulled up, had Thomas with us and the whole house was lit up. You had the guys come up and put Christmas lights all over the front of the house. I don't know if you remember that or not. Lit the whole, lit the whole tree up. We didn't even know. Surprise you. Yeah, we came home with, with Thomas from the hospital and the whole house was lit up. That was pretty cool. Your wife was like, what? Oh uh, yeah, she couldn't believe it. I said, well, that's Bob. <laughs> Hey, Bob Carr here for another episode of the Bob Carr Show. Join me in the studio today, Jimmy Furr. Jimmy. Hey, Bob. How are you, bud? Man, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing good. Staying busy. Hardly can keep up. You're crazy busy. Yeah. Yeah, really. So what, what's going on in the life of Jimmy Furr today? Actually, just working. Working all the time. Saturday, Sunday sometimes. Eight, ten hours a day. So what's a big project you're currently working on? Now we're doing, a, we do a lot of work for the sororities and fraternities in College Park. And that's painting, renovation work? Everything, yeah, pretty much from the roof down. And uh, so we got a big project going over there where they remodeled the whole first floor, added some walls to separate off some different rooms, stuff like that. Okay, so that, that one's keeping that, us that busy. That work never stops. No, it never, no, never stops. The women came back the first weekend they were back. One of the ladies called and said, they got, we got a leak in the ceiling, I need you to come over. So it was on a weekend since so she called back and she said, never mind, I found the leak. One of the ladies got out of the shower and decided to leave the door open and leave the shower running. Flooded the whole bathroom floor. And there's about 40 women in the house. And I guess no one else thought about when they walked in the bathroom, maybe I should turn this water off. <laughs> so she found the problem and we had to go over there and you know, rip the ceiling out and fix it. But that was the leak. So it never stops. Everybody thinks the fraternities tear the places up more than the sororities, but no. it's not always true. I got you. Yeah. I got you. So how did you and I first meet? I was thinking about that the other day. Yep. Actually through Mark Cunningham. Mark Cunningham. He introduced Cunningham, us. Contracting. Yep. And then uh, you were buying a lot of houses back then, fixing them all up. And we basically did everything. Same thing there. We were uh, painting them, drywalling, finishing off the basements, adding powder rooms where the closets were on the first floor. Yeah, a lot of work doing that. I forget how many houses you had now, but it was quite a few. A lot of them, we, yeah. we take, flip them, and some of them we rented. Yep, you were renting them out, yeah, and we were doing repairs if tenants called and needed something, but what was that, like 16, 17 years ago, I guess? Yeah, it's been a long time, yeah. So you were telling me the other day, uh, before we got together, about some of your employees and some of the problems, and some of them retired. Yeah. You were actually, telling me somebody had passed? Yeah, I had one guy who uh, had a knee replacement done, worked out great for him. Had a second one done and uh, didn't really do what the doctors told him to do. Figured he had did the first one, he knew what to do. On the second one, ended up getting a bunch of fluid build up, ended up you know getting around his heart, that kind of thing. And uh, so he passed away. And then my uncle, no, I mean, you know, not old for these, you know, 60 years old, which isn't old anymore, you know. And um, my uncle, he uh, has MS. So he worked with us as long as he could, but um, like a year or so ago, it just got to the point where he had burning down the back of his legs, back was hurting all the time, having a real hard time getting around. So, yeah, he had to retire. So we're down, we're down two or three guys, but we're still making it work. So, what are you seeing in the marketplace as far as hiring people to want to get in your trade? Is that hard now? Yeah, it's, re it's real hard right now because the good people they normally have the jobs already. You know, people to have them aren't going to let them go. And then during the COVID stuff, it was hard to and find anybody to want to work. You know, they were getting extra money to stay home for unemployment and they were like you know well, make an extra thousand of work going on during COVID. oh yeah actually that was probably our biggest year and i think no part kidding. yeah i think part of it was because you know normally like me and you you get up in the morning you go to work you come home eat dinner watch is a that, show or something what we do well that's what we're supposed to do how about that <laughs> and uh you know you go to bed so you're really not yeah. sitting around the house that much now everybody working from home they're sitting there, they're looking around, they're like, you know, I need this fix, I need this fix, oh, I need that I fix. Think about that. And I think that's where it came from because a lot of it was interior repairs. And I think people were just looking around and. So you never missed a beat during COVID? Oh, no, we got, like I say, that was our biggest year. You know, felt bad for a lot of the small mom and pop places that it was the opposite of us. You know what I mean? They couldn't get anything and a lot well, of them went name, out of business. You've been around a lot of years, you yeah, did quality work. 22 years in business for J&D. J&D, though, started. When I was about 12, my cousin David's the D of J&D. Oh, I uh, never realized that. Yeah, yep. And so the J&D started when we was about 12 years old. We used to go around 
shoveling snow, raking leaves, cutting grass, Whatever anything you could think of to make a dollar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's when J&D started. <laughs> I got you. I got yep. you. Yep. You guys had a good run. Yeah. Yeah, we've been doing good. Yep. We actually worked for a company together for a little while until uh, the owner, um, Tom Kane, passed away. And then, that's right. That's right. I remember so, working with Tom. Yep. And so instead of going to work with another company, we just decided just give it a shot. See Tom what we can do. Wendy. Oh man, huge best, inspiration to a lot of people. Best guy ever worked for. Seriously, best guy ever worked for. Yeah, he so, he got a lot of us in business. You know, Mark used to work for him. Yep. So, yep. And I don't know if you remember you're talking about stories when uh, my youngest son Thomas was was born back in uh, November. Uh, we came home from the hospital. And the whole, this is when you first started doing the lights and stuff like that, oh, okay. the Christmas lights. Christmas and we lights. came home, me and my wife pulled up, had Thomas with us, and the whole house was lit up. You had the guys come up and put Christmas lights all over the front of the house. I don't know if you remember that or not. Lit the whole, lit the whole tree up. We didn't even know. Surprise you. Yeah, we came home with, with Thomas from the hospital and the whole house was lit up. And that was pretty cool. Your wife was like, what? Oh, uh, yeah, world? she couldn't believe it. I said, well, that's Bob. You know, that's kind of, and then, like I said, I think you met her one time here. You did a yeah. uh, ice cream yeah, little social. party for the yeah, social, yeah. Yep, and the kids came down for that. So yes, yeah, good time. Yeah, we done a lot together. You know, a lot, a lot of, of, lot of good stories. Doing different oh man, projects. sure as. Yeah, Jimmy, appreciate you. I know you're busy, but I appreciate you stopping in the studio today and sharing some stories. Absolutely, Bob. It was great seeing you again, buddy. Love talking to you. Likewise, sir. This wraps up another episode of the Bob Carr Show, and we'll see you next week.